je trois. If he has attained versatility in the perfect fusion and interchangeable functioning of the sense faculties, he may speculate that all things arise from these perfect transformations. He then seeks the light of fire, delights in the purity of water, loves the wind's circuitous flow, and contemplates the accomplishments of the earth. He reveres and serves them all. He takes these mundane elements to be a fundamental cause and considers them to be everlasting. He will then fall into the error of taking what is not production to be production. Kashyapa and the Brahmas who seek to transcend birth and death by diligently serving fire and worshipping water will become his companions. Confused about the body of the Buddhas, he will lose his knowledge and understanding. Commentary If he has attained versatility in the state of perfect fusion and interchangeable functioning of the six sense faculties, if he can follow his inclinations and do as he wishes, he may speculate that all things arise from these perfect transformations. Becoming attached to the perfect transformations from which everything comes forth, he then seeks the light of fire and worships the fire with extreme devotion. He also delights in the purity of water, sincerely revering the pure nature of water and loves the wind's circuitous flow, being inspired by the nature of wind with its continuous movement and he contemplates the accomplishments of the earth. He reveres and serves them all in various aspects, the, the various aspects of earth, water, fire, and wind. He bows to fire, prostrates himself before water, worships the wind, and makes obeisance to the earth. He says, it is truly inconceivable. How is fire able to emit light? Water is so pure, I really ought to worship it. From morning to night, he bows to water, fire, wind, and earth, worshipping the four elements. He serves them by making offerings to them. Each spirit has spirits connected with it, and soon he is treating the earth spirits, water spirits, fire spirits, and wind spirits as his own ancestors. Mahakashriyapa was originally a member of the fire-worshipping religion. He is to bow in homage to fire. He takes these mundane elements, earth, water, fire, and wind, to be a fundamental cause of himself, and he considers them to be everlasting. He says they abide forever. Well, it's true that earth, water, fire, and wind are just the treasury of the Tathagata. However, you should pay reverence to the treasury of the Tathagata, not to earth, water, fire, and wind. Otherwise, you are putting a head on top of a head instead of working on the fundamentals of venerating the treasury of the Chathakata and respecting the Buddha. He is busy worshipping the superficial aspect. He will then fall into the error of taking what is not production to be production. He wants to end birth and death, but being unable to do so, he forms such an attachment. Kashyapa and the Brahmas who seek to transcend birth and death by diligently serving fire and worshipping water will become his companions. Kashyapa belongs to the great total clan. The Brahmas are those who cultivate pure practices. They exert themselves physically and mentally by engaging in various unbenef uh, unbeneficial ascetic practices. They make offerings to fire and bow to water, hoping that by serving the four elements, they can end birth and death. The cultivator becomes the friend and comrade of such people. Confused about the true nature of body of the Buddhas, he will lose his knowledge and understanding. He loses his genuine wisdom. Sutra, this is a fifth state in which 
he confusedly perceives the elements setting up a false cause that leads to false aspirations based on speculations about his attachment to worship. He strays far from perfect penetration and turns his back on the city of Nirvana, thus sowing the seeds of a distorted view of transformation. Commentary This is the fifth state in which he confusedly perceives the elements setting up the false cause that these two false aspirations based on speculations about his attachment to worship. This is a fifth upside-down theory. His speculations about his attachment lead him to worship and make offerings to the four elements. He becomes confused about his own everlasting true might, the treasury of the Tathagata, and goes running out after the material elements instead. He bases himself on a fallacious knowledge and views in his quest to escape birth and death. This is a false cause. With this wrong cause, he vainly hopes to transcend birth and death. He strays so far from the drama door of perfect penetration and turns his back on the city of Nirvana, thus sowing the seeds of a distorted and wrong view of a transformation. Sutra, further, the good person has thoroughly seen the formation skanda as empty. He has ended production and destruction, but he has not yet perfected the subtle wonder of ultimate serenity. Commentary Further, the good person who is cultivating perfect penetration through the ear by directing the hearing inward to listen to the inherent nature has thoroughly seen the formation skanda as empty. He has investigated the formation skanda, seen it as empty and broken through it. He has already ended the path of production and destruction, but he has not yet perfected the bliss of the subtle wonder of ultimate serenity. Sutra. He may speculate that there is an emptiness within the perfect brightness and Based on that, he denies the myriad transformations, taking their eternal cessation as his refuge. If he interprets this as the supreme state, he will fall into the error of taking what is not a refuge to be a refuge. Those abiding in the shunyata of the heaven of neither thought nor non-thought will become his companions. Confused about the body of the Buddhas, he will lose his knowledge and understanding. Commentary He may speculate that there is an emptiness within the perfect brightness, and based on that, he denies the myriad transformations. Taking their eternal cessation as his refuge, he speculates that there is an emptiness within the brightness, but that is not the case. Isn't that to deny the existence of all the Mara things? Therefore, it is not a refuge of eternal cessation. However, he makes it his refuge. If he interprets this as a supreme state, if he has such a crazy understanding, he will fall into the error of taking what is not a refuge to be a refuge. He wants to rely on a refuge, but there is no such refuge. It is not eternal production or eternal cessation, but it cannot be a refuge, which is what he takes it to be. There is no refuge. Those abiding in the shunyata of the heaven of neither thought nor non-thought become his companions. His attachment is not to the heaven of non-thought among the heavens of the fourth jhana, but rather the heaven of neither thought nor non-thought. The spirits of emptiness shunyata there become his companions. Confused about the body of the Buddhas, he loses his proper knowledge and understanding. Sutra. This is a sixth state in which he realizes a state of voidness based on the idea of emptiness within the perfect brightness. He strays far from perfect penetration and turns his back 
on the city of Nirvana, just showing the states of uh, annihilationism. Commentary. This is a sixth state of crazy understanding in which he realizes a state of voidness based on the idea of emptiness within the perfect rightness. The state of he attains doesn't really exist. History is far from perfect penetration. He goes against the practice of that Dharma door. He turns his back on the city of Nirvana. What he does is contrary to the wonderful fusion of Nirvana and he solves the seeds of annihilationism. Sutra. Further, the good person has thoroughly seen the formation skanda as empty. He has ended production and destruction, but he has not yet perfected the subtle wonder of ultimate serenity. Commentary. Further, the good person who is cultivating samadhi has thoroughly seen the formation skanda as empty. For him, the formation skanda is already empty. He has ended production and destruction, but he has not yet perfected the subtle wonder of ultimate serenity. He has yet to perfect the wonderful bliss of Nirvana. Sutra. In the state of what seems to be perfect permanence, he may bolster his body, hoping to live for a long time in that subtle and perfect condition without dying. If he interprets this as a supreme state, he will fall into the error of being greedy for something unattainable. Asita and those who seek long life will become his companions. Confused about the body of the Buddhas, he will lose his knowledge and understanding. Commentary In the state of what seems to be perfect permanence, he may boister his body hoping to live for a long time in that subtle and perfect condition without dying. He may try to make his body durable because he wishes to dwell in the world forever. He seeks immortality and a life of essential clarity and perfection. If he interprets this as a supreme state, if he has such a crazy understanding, he will fall into the error of being greedy for something unattainable. He craves immortality but cannot attain it. Asita and those who seek long life will become his companions. Asita is a Sanskrit name that translates as incomparable, meaning no one can compare with him. He and his followers are an external sect. They dwell in the heavens and crave immortality. The cultivator draws ranks with them, confused about the Dharma door of the body of the Buddhas. He will lose his proper knowledge and understanding. Sutra. This is the seventh state in which he sets up the false cause of boistering and aspires to permanent worldly existence. Based on his attachment to the life source, he strays far from perfect penetration and turns his back on the city of Nirvana, thus sowing the seeds for false thoughts of lengthening life. Commentary This is the seventh state in which he sets up the false cause of bolstering and aspires to permanent worldly existence based on his attachment to the life source. He clings to the source of his own life and bolsters his body in you know, the hope of attaining long life. He strays far from perfect penetration. He goes against the Dharma door of cultivating the perfect penetration of the ear and by direct, directing the hearing in word to listen to his own nature. And not only that, he turns his back on the city of Nirvana, thus sowing the seeds for false thoughts of lengthening life. Sutra. Further, the good person has thoroughly seen the formation skanda as empty. He has ended production and destruction, but he has not yet perfected the subtle wonder of ultimate serenity. Commentary Further, the good person who is cultivating samadhi has thoroughly seen the formation skanda as empty. He has broken through the formation skanda. He has ended production and destruction but he has not yet perfected the subtle wonder and wonderful bliss of 
and they meet the serenity. Sutra, as he contemplates the interconnection of all lives, he wants to hang on to worldly enjoyments, and is as and is afraid they will come to an end. Caught up in this thought, he will, by the power of transformation, seat himself in a lotus flower palace, conjure up an abundance of the seven precious things, increase his retinue of beautiful women, and indulge his might. If he interprets this as a supreme state, he will fall into the error of taking what is not the truth to be the truth. The、uh, Nagara will become his companion. Confused about the body of the Buddhas, he will lose his knowledge and understanding. Commentary: As he contemplates the interconnection of all lives, this person sees that his own life is interrelated with the lives of all beings, and he wants to hang on to worldly enjoyments and is afraid they will come to an end. He fears that his worldly existence will come to an end, and he doesn't want it to end. Caught up in this thought, he will, by the power of transformation, seat himself in a lotus flower palace, conjure up an abundance of the seven precious things, increase his retinue of beautiful women, and indulge his might. Within the, his lotus flower palace, he conjures up all kinds of gems and enlarges his following of concubines and beautiful women. Then he gives free rein to lust and greed. If he interprets this as a supreme state, he will fall into the error of taking what is not the truth to be the truth. At this point, he again considers this to be supreme. He thinks he has attained what is true, but it is not true. It is merely what he maintains. Vikna Kara will become his companion. Vikna is Sanskrit and translates as to tie and to bind. This refers to tying and binding living beings with rope. Kara is also Sanskrit and translates as my doing. This means the bondage of all living beings that is their lack of freedom is all my doing. It is because of me that they are not free. That's how the members of his external sect think. This cultivated joy ranks with them,、um, confused about the body of the Buddhas. He will lose his proper knowledge and understanding, and will only have wrong knowledge and understanding. Sutra. This is the eighth state in which he decides to indulge in worldly enjoyments based on his wrong thinking. He strays far from perfect penetration and turns his back on the city of Nirvana, the sowing the seeds for becoming a demon of the heavens. Commentary. This is the eighth state in which he decides to indulge in worldly enjoyments based on his wrong thinking. Due to his wrong thoughts, he gets caught up in his burning passion for worldly things. He strays far from perfect penetration. He goes against the dharma door of cultivating perfect penetration through the ear, and he turns his back on the city of Nirvana and the principle it embodies. Thus, sowing the seeds for becoming a demon of the heavens, he will be reborn among the demon in the heavens. Sutra. Further, the good person has thoroughly seen the formation skanda as empty. He has ended production and destruction, but he has not yet perfected the subtle wonder of ultimate serenity. Commentary. Further, the good person has investigated and has thoroughly seen the formation skanda as empty. He has already ended the nature that is subject to production and destruction, but he has not yet fully perfected the subtle and wonderful bliss of ultimate serenity. Sutra, in his understanding of life, he distinguishes the subtle and the coarse, and determines the true and the false. But he only seeks a response in the mutual repayment of cause and effect, and he and he turns his back on the way of purity in the practice of seeing suffering, eliminating accumulation, realizing cessation, and cultivating the way. He dwells in cessation and stops there, 
making no further progress. If he interprets this as a supreme state, he will fall and become a fixed nature hero. Unlearned songhans and those of overweening pride will become his companions. Confused about the body of the Buddhas, he will lose his knowledge and understanding. Commentary: In his illusory understanding of life, he distinguishes the subtle and the coarse. He differentiates between what is fine and what is coarse, and determines the true and the false. He judges what is true and what is false, but he only seeks a response in the mutual repayment of cause and effect. He seeks a、um, response through cause and effect. The response also comes from cause and effect, and he turns his back on the way of purity. In the practice of seeing suffering, eliminating accumulation, realizing cessation, and cultivating the way. To see suffering means to know suffering. The truth of suffering includes the three sufferings, the eight sufferings, and limited sufferings. The truth of, of, of accumulation refers to all our afflictions. Cessation refers to cultivating the way and realizing cessation, that is attaining the wonderful bliss of nirvana. The way refers to the way of cultivation. That's what is meant by knowing suffering. Eliminating accumulation, longing for cessation, and cultivating the way, he dwells in cessation and stops there, making no further progress. When he reaches cessation, he stops advancing. If he interprets this as a supreme state, if he comes up with a crazy rationalization, which he considers superior, he will fall and. Become a fixed natural hero. What is a fixed natural hero? We've talked about this before. It is a person who refuses to turn from the small and go toward the great. He becomes satisfied prematurely and refuses to advance further. Unlearned songhans and those of overweening pride will become his companions. He is as ignorant as the unlearned bhikshu. Who thought the fourth dhyana was the fourth fusion of ahatship? Such a pupil become his companions. Confused about the Buddha's enlightened body nature, he will lose his proper knowledge and understanding.